three tips based on which I can tell if someone needs to go see a therapist um, rather than uh, lean on to me as a, as a coach, as a trainer, as a friend, as a family member. Okay, so here are my three tips. Tip number one, very simple. I have a rule and the rule is when someone comes into my world and asks me for guidance, coaching, help, whatever. Um, I have a rule and it is when in doubt, refer out. Um, it, it's actually a line that I stole of a good friend of mine who uh, works actually with the body, but I find when you have an internal doubt about someone that you speak to, whether or not you should be helping them or coaching them, um, a, a doubt is a clear signal by your body, by your brain, by your unconscious mind. And that could be relating to the level of ex expertise that you have, um, the, 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 the affinity that you have with the subject. So it can be like internally in terms of skills and capability, but it can also really be externally is where you kind of go, ah, oh, there's something something with this person where I, I I'm not quite sure there's I cannot tell if this person is is mentally ill or whatever or not but I don't know so that to me is doubt and doubt means no and silence means wait and collect more information or um, hope there is some kind of resolution within yourself to know where you need to go so that, so that's number tip number one tip when in doubt refer out the second tip that I'd like to give you is, is that I check myself from different perceptions. Okay. So we're all a little bit different here, um, in terms of what we want to do, what we want to help with, what we want to coach with. I would say I'm of the, the category of fairly big ego. And with that, I mean, when I look at, uh, when I talk to a person and they bring a presenting problem to me, I'm pretty, um, I have a pretty big ego in, in, in sort of the sense, what can I do and where are my capabilities? I, I, I really feel that I'm an extremely talented, capable, uh, person in what I do for a living. So there's that ego. I also think that it's important to, to, to realize that I must check and reality test myself. Right. So, um, so, so that's one piece, but there's also coaches that have doubt because they, they kind of go, well, I'm a kind of like a low self-esteem coach. So the, the opposite of ego, the opposite of self-regard, the opposite of self-actualization and things like that. So they kind of go, well, I'm not sure. And then the doubt can actually be more about a fear or an anxiety or not trusting your own self and your own capabilities or, you know, the, the realization that you need to prepare for that feeling to go away, that doubt feeling to go away. So, you know, that's a tricky thing here because then we might look, like, oh, let's rip off the bandaid or jump in the deep end of the pool. You know, so that's a problem that can be a problem right there. So what I like to do is to look at things from the different perspective. Yeah. So the first perspective is to look at things from um, standing in your own shoes, what you would see here and feel and kind of go, well, OK, what do I believe about myself? What do I think and feel that I want to do and all those different things? Okay. What's my skill set? Um, then you can also look at it from other perspectives. The other perspective that you could use is to float your awareness into the shoes of the other person. And, and the one thing that I always check for, the goal is that I must be able to see here and feel what they do. So that, that requires in itself, a level of understanding right there. And I find if I get too many blanks, too many open ended questions or too many questions, 
then I kind of go, well, wait a minute, I'm about to make a decision on someone who I have no idea or predictability over or what's going on. I, I, I need to ask more questions to actually be able to step into their shoes a little bit better. So that's a real key thing, right? Because then I have more information and more information allows me to make a better decision. Another viewpoint that I, I can use is to neither be in my own shoes or in the other person's shoes, but to actually step into a position of observer like I am a scientist. So I'm not on my side, I'm not on the client side either. I am now going to be like, let's say, the jury on whether or not I should be working with this person from a non-emotional point of view, uh, impartial point of view, scientific point of view, to kind of go, okay, what is it that I learn here? Okay, so that's a perspective. And, and you can imagine, I, I kind of imagine that by seeing myself and the other person on a movie screen, okay? So... Another perspective that I could use is like, well, how does this impact the group that this person is part of? That's maybe a little bit less interesting, um, but I do like to step into my own source, purpose and meaning. You know, so from the space of my own source and my own purpose and meaning, am I being in service by working with this person in the capacity that I want to? Or is this about me wanting to serve my business or me wanting to serve my own uh, self, you know, is it really about this person? Am I contributing to the greater good by moving forward with this or not? So those are the different perspectives. So tip number three, um, tip number three is a, sort of like a very practical way of assessment that I have been using um, for my discovery calls or my, you know, sync up calls or what happens when I meet a, a student or a client, I meet them on the phone and, and there, there, there may be a question if somebody should be t attending another training or, or, or should be seeing a therapist or, or something like that. And I start to ask questions about, um, Things like, what is it like? How do your thoughts work? You know, those types of things. What kind of emotions are you feeling? But I think a really good place to triage um, is by saying, um, are you able to function um, at your place of work? I'm not saying necessarily like a rock star getting promotions and being the, the, the favorite among your colleagues or anything like that. What I'm talking about is can you go to work for 40 hours a week and be emotionally stable, have stable, fairly stable thoughts? Are you able to function? Are you able to take on your responsibilities at your place of work? So that's a real good question to ask right there. A similar question relates to me are about people's relationships, the relationship that they have with their children, with their significant other, with their friends and family members. I need to start asking questions about, about that, right? So also a healthy human being is able to maintain uh, relationships, things like trust and mutual connection and mutual trust needs to be able to be there. Um, I also want to know how someone reacts um, under normal levels of stress. So a normal level of stress is, let's say, uh, you, you are running for the train and you miss it and now you're going to be late at work. Are you gonna have a complete full blown meltdown or you're gonna go, you know, say a swear word and, and, and sort of move on and try to make up for time. So I wanna know how someone operates under normal levels of stress. Um, I also wanna know how someone responds to things like arguments, um, things like being told that you're not right. And then lastly, 
I want to know more about, are you thinking about harming yourself or harming others? Um, those are sort of like the quiet questions that I want to ask to see if I should refer on, um, whether that is a friend, a family member, uh, a student of mine or a coachee. Um, so that's a little bit uh, about that. Uh, by the way, the LA training is filling up. So if you're interested in coming in September, then get on that soon. See you around.